Hello and welcome to the session of anti-globulin testing which is also called Combs test. It is an immunology laboratory procedure that used to detect presence of antibody against circulating red blood cells in the body which can induce hemolysis. Antiglobulin testing can be either direct or indirect which is called direct antiglobulin testing also called direct Combs test and indirect antiglobulin testing also called indirect Combs test. First we see direct Combs test. Here is the principle. The principle of DAT is to detect the presence of antibodies that are attached to RBCs in vivo. With direct antiglobulin testing, a monospecific or polyspecific reagent is then added to washed RBC to detect bound IgG and or complement C3. So RBC coated in with antibodies in vivo is then treated with anti-human globulin. In practice, many laboratories will first use the polyspecific reagent that can detect both IgG and C3 and positive result will then be followed with monospecific testing to characterize the antibody further. So RBCs are already coated with antibodies and then when we reacted with anti-human globulin it will form RBC agglutination. Let's discuss the tube method for DCT. First take normal saline in the test tube and add 2 to 3 drops of patient's whole blood. Make a 5% suspension and take 2 to 3 drops from this suspension into the new test tube. Wash these red blood cells for 3 times with normal saline. And in these washed RBCs add anti-human globulin and incubate for 30 minutes and after that centrifuge for 1 minute and then observe under the microscope and check for agglutination. If there is no agglutination then the DCT is negative but if agglutination is positive then we can say DCT is positive. Let's see the gel card method for DCT. First take normal saline in the test tube then add 2 to 3 drops of patient's whole blood. Make a 5% suspension and add 2 to 3 drops from this suspension to new test tube. Wash this 2 to 3 times with normal saline. Now take out 10 microliter of the packed RBCs and add into the lace solution and make 0.8% suspension. From this suspension take out 50 microliter and put it into the microwell of gel card. And centrifuge this gel card for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes observe the reaction. This is the spectrum of reaction. It can be 0, 2 plus 4 and mixed field and also hemolyzed reaction can be seen. Now let's learn indirect Combs test. It is used to detect unbound antibodies to RBCs which may be present in the patient's serum. So we require patient's serum in this test. So let's see the principle. Antibodies present in the patient serum is then reacted with pooled O positive cells and then added anti-human globulin. This all three combines to form RBC agglutination. Let's see the tube method for ICT. First we make a pooled O positive cell suspension. How to make it? Let's see. First O positive RBC, second O positive RBC and third O positive RBC samples is taken into the test tube and then normal saline is added to make a 5% suspension of 
pulled O positive cells. From this suspension, two to three drops is added to new test tube, and it is washed three times with normal saline. And we keep aside this washed pulled O positive RBC suspension. Okay. Now take patient sample. Add two drops of the serum into the new test tube, and in this test tube, we add two to three drops of washed pulled O positive RBCs, and we incubate this test tube for one hour at thirty-seven degrees centigrade, and then we wash this test tube three times with normal saline, and after washing. we we are adding anti human globulin to this test tube and keep it for 5 minutes and centrifuge for 1 minute after the after 1 minute check under the microscope to see the reaction if no agglutination is seen then it is normal icit is negative but if agglutination is present then icit is positive Let's see the gel card method for ICT. We first make pulled O positive cells. The procedure is exactly same as of previous method. After the washed pulled O positive RBCs are acquired, we take out ten microliter of this packed. RBCs and put it into the one mL of least solution, and we are going to make a point eight percent suspension of this RBC. So on gel card, we are adding fifty microliter of the point eight percent suspension of pulled O positive cells, and in the same well, we are adding twenty five microliter of the patient serum. and we incubate this gel card for 37 degree for 15 minutes and centrifuge it for 10 minutes after 10 minutes we can read the reaction this is how the gel card method is performed now let's understand the indications of this anti globulin testing first is autoimmune hemolytic anemia second is drug induced immune hemolytic anemia third is allo antibodies mediated hemolytic transfusion reactions hemolytic disease of newborn systemic lupus erythematous without hemolytic anemia let's understand the interfering factors the type of antibody Most commercial anti-globulin testing screens for antibodies to IgG complement C3 or both. False negative results may occur in cases of AIHA caused by autoantibodies other than IgG or C3, such as IgM or IgA. Second is amount of antibody present. The autoimmune anemia. may be induced by levels of the antibody below the detection limit of the dat so it can give false negative result third is high serum protein in certain diseases such as myeloproliferative disease or excess protein or immunoglobulin may cause false positive agglutination study due to abnormally high levels of the protein or related to antibody rbc agglutination infection serum of individual infected with certain microorganism may create a false positive agglutination result hiv malaria hepatitis c and in rare cases hepatitis e virus antiphospholipid syndrome cross reactivity between antiphospholipid antibodies and rbc membranes so it can give false positive result wartens jelly the neonatal umbilical cord samples the presence of mucopolysaccharides rich wartens jelly in the test of dct it can give false positive result for dct 
important points to remember always take positive negative and auto control for each test procedure the sample exposed to a reagent that demonstrate aggregates of at least 3 to 5 cells under the microscopic examination is considered a positive result in patients with autoimmune hemolytic anemia the degree of agglutination typically correlates with severity of hemolysis a positive antiglobulin test require analysis in the clinical context to make an accurate diagnosis these are the references for this video hope you like it thank you